Well folks, a very good morning to you. Welcome to Lincolnshire. Cockney kayaker here. I finally got up this morning and uh, thought to myself, way, way too hot to be working today. And I thought a much better idea would to be to go down and uh, spend a few hours on the boat. So I made an executive decision and that's where we're off to. So I'm just packing the car and uh, I guess you'll be catching up with me um, in a little while. Once I get down by the river, see you soon. So here we are at uh, Brighton Ferry. And one of the first jobs is uh, this morning is to make a new kind of walkway, like a gangplank from, you know, sort of this section here where we park down to where my boat is, although my boat's a little bit further up there. I've been walking along sort of this gangplank here and you can see it's so overgrown and proper nasty and even you know, if you do make it onto it, it's very, very dangerous, very flimsy. I've bought some six by two timber, tantalized timber 4.8 meters and some uh, scaffold boards off a friend of mine and I've cut those all to size so all I need to do is sort of hack my way through this sort of jungle so I've got a half decent um, strimmer and uh, hopefully it won't be too challenging and then once I've done that I'm gonna uh, gonna have a bimble out on the on the boat so uh, the next time you see me, it should be constructed, fingers crossed. And here we have it, all done, at last. So now, much more steadier, much more safer. Surprisingly calm on the Derwent today, just a little flow, a little bit of flow on there. But yeah, it's uh, I'm more than happy with that. River Derwent and what a glorious morning it is. It's uh, very flat <clears throat> unlike the Derwent, it's normally towing quite quickly but it's um, I wouldn't say flat calm but as close to it as I think you're probably be likely to get. So uh, what's the plan today? Well I'm gonna go we're gonna we're traveling north on the uh, on the Derwent and I'm gonna go as far as I can now when we come up to the junction where you kind of bear right to the Pocklington Canal we're gonna carry on probably for about another I don't know eight to a quarter of a mile and then basically that's as far as you can go certainly on a, on a boat like this um, I think you can probably go further on a kayak um, but that's the end of the road for us I don't know whether there was once upon a time a lock there. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I'm going to I'm going to go past the Pocklington Canal, and then it gets quite twisty and windy, and the river sort of is not as wide as it is sort of in the stretch where we are currently. So I'm just going to go up there just to practice my my sort of steering skills that are very limited. <laughs> and, um, uh, and when I get to the end of that, it's 
think is about 20 meters wide so I'm going to try to turn the boat round without making a fool of myself so just a bit of practice then I'm going to sail back and then go up to the uh, Pocklington Canal and go through the lock and onto the actual canal and uh, go and see what, what we've got there. My only reservation at this moment in time is, is that um, the Pocklington Canal could be weeded and uh, not viable for, for me to actually sort of sail on and uh, get in all that rubbish stuck around my, my prop but we'll see um, hopefully that ain't the case and uh, we can have a chug along there so uh, for the time being we're just going to uh, enjoy the Derwent and the abundance of wildlife that there is on here right so before I forget there's a couple of things that um, I want to share with you first of all um, anyone that comes on to the Derwent know that there's a major issue with horse flies and for me personally I'd rather be stung by a wasp than bitten by um, a horse fly. I found a product that for me is unbelievably good. Since I've been using it I've not been bitten once. What tends to happen is the horse fly is a repellent, the horse fly will land on you, well, generally not even land on you but it close to you and off it goes. This is the stuff here. It's called Jungle Formula, and uh, it's a nine hour protection against mosquitoes and biting insects. And if you haven't tried this stuff, believe me, you want to get yourself um, get yourself some. <clears throat> I think it's about eight or nine pound off Amazon, and if I remember, I shall put a link to it um, in the box below. Jungle. Yeah, and the other thing that uh, I, uh, I want to share is I'm, I'm actually doing the um, VHF short range radio course, which is run by the Royal Yachting Association. Um, it's mainly, you know, to when I get out on tidal waters like the Ouse and the Trent, and then perhaps the Humber and out onto the North Sea and across to. Hunstanton and Norfolk so that because that's what I intend to do the actual license is free you can you can get that just by going onto the Ofcom website but to operate it you need to pass um, an exam um, and the way that works because someone has asked me about this is that um, I think it was 65 or 75 pounds and you, you you do the syllabus online and once you've gone through the syllabus you then take an online examination and if you pass that you get a certificate and then you you then have to attend um, physically attend a um, uh, place run you know where they where they run these courses for me it would be Grimsby and sit um, an exam which is part I think written and part oral or whatever I'm not really sure um, but it's just so that you know you're you're safe and competent in using a uh, VHF marine radio. Finding the syllabus, if I'm honest, proper boring. Um, there's a lot in there that I'm not sure. It's, you know, you really need to know to operate a radio or to call a marine up and ask if there's a berth for the evening. <coughs> um, a lot of really important information like. You know, um, Mayday calls and Pam Pan calls, um, but equally, there's a lot of stuff in there that is mind numbing. But it's something that I am going to do um, before I kind of tackle these these big waters, or fast flowing waters. It's something that I'm going to do. I mean, I take Young Jack out with me, and you know, it would be ridiculous to go out on them kind of waters and seas without a radio. I've gone for the portable. The, the handheld one rather than the fixed set. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'm going to find a motivation to concentrate a bit more on it and sit the exam and get that one done and dusted.
my co-pilot there. Yeah, so I've been asked by one or two people if I could do a bit more of an in-depth video uh, regarding the boat that I purchased. Uh, people are interested in the, the engines that I've got, the uh, battery, leisure batteries that I'm using, water supply, electrics, control panel, soft furnishings, etc. So, yep, leave it with me. Um, I'll get my head around it and upload something in, uh, in due course. It's a red kite. Right, so there's the Pocklington Canal just over there to the right. So we're going to carry on to the left here on the Derwin. And as I said earlier on, there's a lot of twists and turns on here and quite narrow. So um, let's see how we get on. Very narrow, very narrow. Right, so here we are then at the end of the uh, Pocklington Canal for me. I can't go any further. Um, looks like old, I don't know whether they were some kind of lock gates, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, I think if you had a kayak, you could probably go down this channel here, maybe, maybe not, but there's a channel over there which I'm gonna try to get a bit closer to. But for me, this is the end, unfortunately. All right, so let's see if we can turn this this boat up around. Stick it in reverse a bit. So I don't think you could probably get a kayak through there. I'm not sure. I can't quite get to it. I want to edge my bets and go into too much of shallow water. Quite possibly. Certainly wouldn't be the end of the line if he was kayaking. Right, so now I'm going to head to the Pocklington Canal. So it's a sharp left turn away from these lilies here. So it makes it even sharper onto the canal. Try to park over over there without crashing into it. Right, I've got a feeling just coming into the sort of lock um, up to the lock here, it's starting to get really, really weedy, and um, the door, uh, just there, that blue door was starting to judder. So I think I've got some weed wrapped around my prop. Let's have a look. Yeah, there is a bit wrapped around there, and that's just enough to unbalance everything. So, all right. So this is the the low gate. 
I mean, if, if it's if it's weeded and I can't get through, then I'm not going to waste water by emptying the lock. It's just pointless. So this is the other side of the lock. I mean, the water is crystal clear. I mean, I can... <laughs> I can see everything. I don't know whether the camera's picking that up. I'll try to get a better shot a little bit later on. Thousands upon thousands of fish, loads of rud. It's unbelievable. Very deep as well. I'd say that's probably a good eight to ten foot deep that. But uh even so, there's a lot of weed just below the surface of the water in some places. So I'm just going to take a walk up there, and just as I say, if if I can't if I can't get a decent distance on on the canal, then I'm not going to empty the lock unnecessarily. But anyway, let's go and take a look. So we are just this is just a little way up from the lock. You can see how weedy that is, but that is still passable. For a kayak i'm not so sure in my boat i think that's gonna i'm not going to avoid that around my prop well, these lilies are quite dense all right so i hope that's picking it the camera's picking that up but that is full-on weed or lilies and that's thick so uh i don't think i'm gonna get through there there's a channel just there about a meter or so again a kayak I think if I was in my kayak I could probably get through there the only problem is the paddles it would be hitting the the lilies and progress would be a bit of a bummer so I don't think it's worth actually coming through the lock I don't think there's any reason why I should empty the lock of water I'm not really going to progress any 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 distance on the canal so uh, unfortunately I think that's probably the end of the road for me until the weather starts changing as we come into autumn. Disappointing really because I've said it before and I say it again, the Pocklington, Pocklington Canal is you know, one of my favourite um, stretches of water. I love it, I love the wildlife on there, it's incredible. But unfortunately, um, I'm not going to get on it today, so I'm going to go back to the boat and uh, have a bit of lunch. So I'm just sitting on the boat, just throwing some bread out and watching the fish feed. But just there, I don't know whether you can see, there's a dirty great big pike. Just motionless. Right, well we're fed and watered. It's absolutely roasting. So uh, we'll have a cold drink and then uh, then head back, I think. So we're steaming back nicely to Brighton Ferry at about four mile an hour. So I think I'm going to probably put the camera into hyperlapse. So I'll take this opportunity to uh, thank everybody for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. 
and subscribe to the channel uh, really does help and would be much appreciated I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking all new subs uh, new subscribers um, it does mean a lot to me and, and I really do appreciate that as well so uh, once again thanks for watching and until the next time safe and happy boating